All right. Hello, um, Peter is Cecily here. Um, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time coming to watch my videos, you're very welcome. So in this channel, we talk a lot of things, you know, regarding coming to school in Canada, securing scholarship and funding, and generally about graduate life. And I don't just always want to talk about it myself. I always love to bring people who have experience to just come share their story. So you hear from them directly and in one way or the other, their story can inspire you to learn a lot of things in your preparation. Once again, my name is Peter Cecile and uh, you're welcome to my channel. So I have with me today a friend who I also consider my mentor in this very big journey. Uh, his name is uh, Dr. Anthony Akirile. He's going to introduce himself anyway, uh, just for us to get to know him better. Um, okay, over to you, uh, Dr. Anthony. <laughs> uh, Peter, uh, thanks so much for having me on your platform. I know we've planned this thing, you know, it's been a long time coming now to have That's this right. done. But finally, the day is here. And uh, my name is Ola Tunji Antonia Kirili. I uh, recently completed my PhD in nutritional biochemistry at the Memorial University of Newfoundland. Yeah, I'm very, you know, the newest doctor in town. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, oh, I, bless God. I remember back in the day. Anyway, for those who don't know, myself and Anthony, we actually now have graduated. You know, we both graduated from the same laboratory, um, you know, under the same supervisor at Memorial University. So, uh, he, he's home to me, right? So this is home to me, and <laughs> I'm very excited to to share in this your experience. So now, you know, having completed your PhD now, how how do you feel? You know, how you know, much difference do you feel? You know, when you were doing the PhD or now, what's what's, what's the difference? Share something. <laughs> well, I I can't really say there's there's difference uh, because uh, sometimes differences or indifferences is a function of mindset. That's very true. So uh, I, I just see it as a phase completed and another phase, you know, starting up. You know, someone said uh, life is in phases and men are in sizes. That's very you true. You know, I, I just see it as, okay, to the glory of God, a phase is gone and let's face the next phase. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, when yeah. you when one phase is completed, then it's the, you know, I, I was listening to my smuro always say, mm. but whatever has been completed, you know, it's no longer a potential. So the potential now becomes what is inside of you that is yet to be manifested. So now that the PhD is gone, you know, we, you know, we're very grateful to God then, you know, yeah, praise God. new levels always coming in, right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Amen. 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 Yeah. I mean, you know, um, for a lot of people that don't know me, we're, we're Christians and then we are very proud of it. So whenever you hear us saying amen, you know, at some point in time today, so we always are proud to share our faith, you know, wherever we go and we're very proud of it. Okay. So, I mean, there is a lot of things, you know, some people want to know you, you know, where you came from, the country of origin, the cost, you just a little bit of your story, your background, you know, and how, you know, your peer, your bachelor's, and your, your master's, what has the journey been like for you? Uh, my story is long ago. Okay. <laughs> Are you let, sure you let, can, let, you let can hear just... my story? Let's, let's take the, the, the abridged version and then maybe when we see one on one, you know, a um, few years from now, when we'll be having a, a big, you know, live podcast and all that. So we'll bring it to share, you know, all of the story. Or just now give us the abstract. That's the thing we're used to. <laughs> okay. So, like I said, it's a long story, but I will give you the condensed version of my story. Like I said, my name is Ola Tunju Antonia Kirili. I, um, I mean, I came from Nigeria, <laughs> so I'm originally from Nigeria. I attended Obafemi Miawolo University, uh, Great Ife. Absolutely. I studied um, food uh, science and technology. I completed that in 2010. And um, I worked a little bit in Nigeria. I worked with Nestle Nigeria PLC. I moved from Nestle Nigeria PLC to a higher position in Nigerian flour mills at Papa. Then I got a scholarship to study nutritional sciences in, uh, in the UK. 
that's uh, the University of Nottingham. So I was at University of Nottingham for one and a half years. Then um, I got another offer to, to continue at my line of research at Memorial University of Newfoundland. And uh, as of today, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's a very... I remember then um, when I was, I don't know if, you, I know you can still remember very well when I was, you know, um, planning to come to Memorial University, you know, how I would yeah. always communicating via chat, you know, like, Anthony, you know, I'm trying to apply, what's the next step, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm trying to look for a house, you know, you know, how yeah. some of those runs around, run around, you helped me to do them, you know, I really, I really appreciate that, you know, having someone to talk to in the lab that you are going to, that is in Nigeria was, was a blessing for me. Yeah. Was a blessing for me. So, yeah. like, how did you, you know, choose or get to know about Memorial University, or you know, decide to like, oh, now I'm going to Canada. You know, there is US, there is other countries. So, how did you streamline your choices to just, you know, Canada or Memorial University specifically? Uh, okay, so uh, I will take no glory in all the journey. I would have to attribute the glory to God. Uh, I, I call him the giver and the yes, enabler. Yes, you know, he right. gives you and he enables you to do Absolutely. whatever it is that he has given you as a vision. Absolutely. So my story to Canada can be, um, can be traced back to some years back in the Obafi Mariola University. Okay. Then I was still, you know, I was still in a relationship with my... Um, my uh, wife now, then she was my uh, fiancée. Mm -hmm. So then uh, there was a day she asked me, uh, where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> hey, big question. <laughs> uh, all of the biggest question any guy can get in life, right? So, and uh, spontaneously, I said Canada. Wow. And as at that time, I've never been to any airport in the world. Okay. okay. Not even a fake one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I didn't have any international passport. You know, wow. I just said that. Then I can tell you today that it wasn't me that spoke that day, or it wasn't me that answered that question. So fast forward to 2014. Then I was completing my master's in, in the UK. Then one day I went to church and I got back home and um, the message was very, very powerful. Okay. And when I got home, I was just thinking about it. And all of a sudden, it just dropped in my mind. I feel forgotten about Canada. And it was just as if a veil was taken out of my, my, my face, you know. Wow. And I opened my computer and I was doing a research on uh, omega-3 metabolism in uh, obese mothers. Okay. And that was in, in UK. Okay. So I just opened my, my computer and I just typed universities in Canada, professors doing research on omega-3. Wow. <laughs> and I, I think I saw about six okay. professors that day. And I sent email to, I'm not sure, maybe three wow. or two of them. And I just, after sending that email, I just felt, I felt a huge peace in my mind. Wow, wow. And I closed my computer and I went to bed. Wow. And by the time I woke up the following day, my then supervisor, <laughs> because now <laughs> yes. he's the of the bus, yes, yes. had replied. Wow. And the funniest part of that story was that I just completed my first semester wow. in my master's program in the UK. That is amazing. So the journey started even before I completed my master's program. And that's why I would tell somebody, you know, if there's a journey you want to embark on, the earlier you start, I think the better it is. Yeah. And I, I really love that part where you talked about, you know, being able to conceive the thing in your mind, you know, when you, the, the seed was already sown that, oh, it, it's Canada. And then before you knew it, everything just started working together for your good. And then, you know, you just receive a message. And I, I, I can really resonate with that fact that sometimes you just go for an event and hear a talk and then something just spike in your spirit. 
you know, like, oh, I need to start doing something. And then you just go home and you just, you just start doing it. And then it, talk, it, it shows you the importance of timing, you know, just sending the email at the right time, at the right moment when the professor has funding. It's just, it's just amazing, you know, when, when one is led to just send an email. That's what I usually tell people. If you're led to just, you know, send an email, for some people, it can be just one or two emails. For some other people, it can for, for other people, it can be a lot. So whatever you know worked for you. Like when I started my PhD, it was just one email that I sent that I sent. No, <laughs> no other, right? Yeah. Oh, that's that's really I can tell you. I mean, God is the author of time. Yes. You know, there's there's no time that is too late and there's no time that is too early, you know. That's right. And that's why I 100% I agree with what you have said that um, if God is, you know, prompting you to do something at that time, Just that it. is the best time to do it. You know, even one second delay yep. could be a disaster. Absolutely. Yes. That's great. So when you, I mean, you know, I think this process of getting a supervisor is really one of the most, you know, um, a lot of the comments that I've been getting is usually, you know, professors not replying and then they send emails, they don't reply and stuff like that. So can you just give a little bit of highlight of what are some of the things you included in that email just briefly? Oh, okay, so um, uh, there are a few components uh, of inquiry email that, that, I, that I do say to people, you know. One thing is that um, people want to see your antecedents. So what have you done in the past? And um, if we have done something, how are you putting those things into words? Mm -hmm. You know, some people have done quite a number of things and they think it's not big enough to put in their email, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, when I'm talking about your antecedent, I'm talking about relevant antecedents, relevant experiences, relevant achievements, mm -hmm. you know. Because if you're going to put everything you've done, mm -hmm. you're going to make your email very boring. That's right. You know, and um, that's what happened in the place of preparation. You don't just wake up and, and just send an email to a professor. Have you read an article from the professor? Okay. Do you know what the professor is doing as the area of research that, that, that the person is venturing into? Do you know what it's like, you know, to explore things in that area? That's so right. if you have not done that, don't send an email. It, okay. it's, it makes your email look like, it, it, the email you send when you have not done your background work makes you look like a joker. That's right. You know, for example, I, I just shared my experience. I was working on omega-3 metabolism during pregnancy uh, in obese uh, mothers. You know, so I was looking for those who are in that line of research. And before I sent that email, I looked at what they have done in the past. Does yeah. this align to what I want to do as, as my area of research? Does it align with my goal? If yes, then I can go ahead. If no, Absolutely. there's no point sending any email. Absolutely. You know, it's not about just going to start a PhD. It's, a lot, it's all about going to start what you would really be fulfilled that you have done. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Because it's a long journey. You don't want to spend that journey in misery. Absolutely. You know, sometimes when, um, you know, okay, we are going to talk about some of the challenges. When those challenges start hitting you on the head. Yeah, the then, then one, that... thing I, one thing I've not mentioned about the, the content of your email is, you know, looking at what the person has done, how can you add value yes. to that research group? Or how can you add value to that person? Because life is about value. What are you bringing to people, the table? People will pay you for values, yeah. you know. So what value do you think you can add to that person? And in my own case, I was proposing something that I saw was missing in what they have done in the past. Yeah. And that was the icebreaker, right? Yeah. So, you know, when you are sending an email, look at it again and ask yourself, will you pay money? to make someone do this thing for you. Absolutely, yes. And that applies to whoever you are sending it to. You know, yes. the person is asking himself or herself, is this person going to add value to my lab? Yes. And that's what they are looking for. Absolutely. The student that can add value to them. Yes. Remember, you know, those times when we were in the lab then, you know, when we used to interview some students that, you know, <laughs> so, 
you know, there was a day we were interviewing students. I was like, wow, so this is how I was being interviewed then. And I remember some of the questions that were that, that you asked me and some other people in the lab asked me. <laughs> so I was like, this life is... I'm uh, sorry if I had to put you on all seat there. Oh, man, it was... It's part of the game, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> I think what was, what was destined was destined. You know, that's yeah. what, I, what, I, what I would say. And mm. I would say that that... It was divinely orchestrated. I, you know, it was just everything just aligned in order. You know, everything just aligned in order, and everything just worked out for my good. Thank you for really sharing that 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 email. You know, I've I've read through some emails, and then someone just sent email. My name is uh, so and so. I have BS in biochemistry, and I want to start masters in in the fall. Are you accepting students? Finish. You know, I want to work in your lab. I was like, you ask yourself, if you send yourself this email, will you accept you? Yeah, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's really yeah. very important, you know, knowing that these professors also receive like hundreds of emails every day. So you really need to stand out. Yeah, and I, I, I do tell people, you know, it's not about the length of, yeah. of your email. It's about how much you can communicate yeah. using the... The, the, the shorter, you know, sentences you can compose, you know. So sometimes it's not like all the stories about when you were born, who yes. your father is, who your mother Absolutely. is. Look, look for what, you know, will sell you as a person to whoever you are showing interest in as your potential supervisor. Okay. You know, don't make it too, you know, boring, you know, unnecessary yeah. information. Just make it succinct. Yeah. and precise or concise absolutely you know? all right that's interesting so uh, another part so when you um, i mean obviously coming from the uk and then coming to the phd you know so what what were some of the skills you had to learn in order to quickly help you to, to adapt to the you know canadian education system or was there you know something different you know that you from what you already the experiences in UK, you know, some things you had to learn to help you to adapt in your PhD? Uh, well, I, I had to learn a lot of things because uh, I did a taught master's in the UK. So okay. I was not well grounded when it comes to, you know, doing research, you know, so, and um, although going to UK actually helped me to, to eliminate some aspect of weather shock okay. so I, I, I wasn't really shocked when okay. I, when the weather you know when i saw the weather in different and you you came in the winter right and i came during winter okay. right so so it wasn't like a big deal you know because i've seen a little bit of what you know winter looks like in in the uk when, but when i came to newfoundland it was a different ball game but i wasn't totally surprised so i had to learn a lot of things you know, I had to learn how to, the, the most important thing I had to learn was how to generate ideas. Wow, yes. That was the most critical thing that I had to learn. And uh, I picked that horn at the earliest time in my PhD. Because sometimes it's all about to, it's all about seeing the future of your area of research. Absolutely. Even before starting what you are starting. For example, an average PhD would take four to six years. Then you ask yourself, if I start this project now, will this thing be relevant in four years' time? Yeah. If your answer is no, then you don't have to embark on that because in four years' time, people are asking you, which world are you? In? Yes, <laughs> which planet absolutely. are you from? <laughs> what are you nobody, doing? No, nobody is doing this anymore. You yes. know? And another thing is how to communicate my ideas. You know? It's another thing for you to be able to generate it. Then it's another thing for you to communicate the idea in a proper and scientific way, you know, because a PhD is all about researching and communicating, researching and communicating. When, you're, when I talk about communicating, I talked about, I'm, I'm referring to you publishing your outcome and you presenting your outcome or your findings in conferences or in seminars or in um, scientific gatherings, you know. So those are the major things that I had to learn. 
And of course, I had to learn techniques that are involved in my area of research. Absolutely. What are the techniques I need to use? And in my own case, I was proposing something that has not been done in my lab before. So yes. there was no equipment, there was no uh, uh, tools for me to use because I was my uh, PhD involved a lot, a lot of surgical procedures. I know, I remember. <laughs> so <laughs> we had to, we had to, had to. After my proposal, then my boss asked me, "Okay, what are the things you need to carry this out?" So I had to propose the things we need. So we had to buy a lot of tools that would help me, you know, to proceed in, in, in my line of research. So a lot of things that I had and, to learn. And I, and I know back then, you know, that was, I know, uh, you know, um, our supervisor really respected you a lot, you know, in that <laughs> aspect, you know, because anytime we always, she always talk about, you know, this thing we are doing, you know, it hasn't been, it's not a common technique and we have yeah. to figure things out, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and, and in the aspect of communicating your, communicating your research, I think, you know, I really, I grew in that aspect, you know, I, I used to watch the way you do your presentation and the way the ideas were communicated, you know, I learned that a lot, you know, and then I just started following you from the back, you know, from <laughs> back and just seeing, okay, you know, the style of presentation, the, the communication, you know, because I wasn't used to obviously presenting research, you know, so yeah. you having you in the lab then, you know, doing all of this presentation, you know, having lab meetings and, and all that, it was really a very great experience for me. When I, whenever I, when I learned, you know, do you know, can you remember at some point people were like, ah, Peter, you, you, you present like Anthony. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I learned from him. I learned, you know, very good, you know, presentation skills from, from him. I, I, have to, I have to give credit to, yes. to the person I took over from as a PhD student in the oh, lab. Nice, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I learned a lot of things from that guy. Yes. You know, I, life is about learning. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I say this, the day we stop learning is yes. the day we start dying. Absolutely. So every day we learn, you know. Yeah. And I'm happy I, I was a vessel through with yes. those things, but I also learned it from someone. You yes, know? yes, yes. Then we, 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 we pass it on. You yeah, know, I, I remember the, the new guy, you know, the, the girl that is about finishing her master's in her lab now, you know, when she came, you know, then guiding, you know, this path of presentation. And then there was a time she called me like, hey, I won the presentation. I was like, yes. And she was like, oh, well, thanks to you for, you know, helping me as well. Yeah. We still thank yeah. Anthony for, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> for leading the way, you know. Um, it's good. It's good. Yeah. So when you, when you really have people, you know, you are whatever thing you want to become, and you, uh, uh, you, uh, there was a statement you made when I just came in that really mm. that, that stayed with 